Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is March 12, 2021. And if the calendar is right, today is the Sabbath. Friday at sundown to Saturday at sundown. Until Saturday at sundown. Now we're going to do Jeremiah chapter 50, where Jeremiah speaks of the doom of Babylon. Now a little background here. Northern Israel, the ten northern tribes that split off from Judah, their capital was Samaria. Judah's capital was Jerusalem. They were taken into captivity like a hundred years earlier by the Assyrian Empire. And they never returned to the land. In Jeremiah 3.8, God said he divorced Israel. But he never divorced Judah. And then a hundred years later or so, approximately, I don't know exactly how many years it was, but, uh, you know, Judah saw Israel carried away. They saw it. He said, oh, them guys were bad. Lord's angry with them. He took them. He let them go become slaves. Or they were killed. But uh, did Judah pay attention? No. They actually did worse. So Jeremiah told everybody, Captivity is coming. Surrender yourselves to the king of Babylon, my servant, Nebuchadnezzar. Oh, yeah. But they wouldn't listen. So Nebuchadnezzar, uh, a lot of the people died in the fighting. And then those who were left over were taken into slaves into Babylon. And Babylon took all the gold and silver that they could find. You know, the temple was just absolutely cleaned out. And the city was burned, exactly like Jeremiah had warned. But nobody wants to listen to Jeremiah. And, you know, people do what they want to do. But here's the deal. In Daniel chapter 4, the book of Daniel, chapter 4. Guess who wrote this book? Well, let's find out. We're not going to read the whole chapter. I'm just giving you a background of Jeremiah 50. Jer Daniel chapter 4, verse 1. Nebuchadnezzar the king, unto all people, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied unto you. I, who's this I? Nebuchadnezzar. I thought it good to show the signs and wonders that the Most High God hath wrought toward me. How great are his signs and how mighty are his wonders. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and his dominion is from generation to generation. I, Nebuchadnezzar, was at rest. Ah, see, this tells you. I, Nebuchadnezzar, was at rest in mine house and flourishing in my palace. And I saw a dream which made me afraid, and the thoughts upon my bed and the visions of my head troubled me. Now, you could read the whole thing, you know. But uh, Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. His uh, magicians, astrologers, they couldn't, they couldn't figure out what the dream was and what it meant. But Daniel, Daniel was able to interpret it. Now, later on, Nebuchadnezzar started bragging about, oh, look at this great kingdom of mine that I, with my hands, have created. And God humbled him, made him uh, like an ox. And they put him out in the field and let him eat with grass with the oxen for seven years. And you better believe the family was watching this the whole time. 
So, what happens next? Nebuchadnezzar dies. God's servant. His son comes to rule and reign in his father's place. So, let's read Daniel chapter 5. Belshazzar the king made a great feast to a thousand of his lords and drank wine before the thousand. Can you imagine? You're talking about a thousand people that are in charge of all the regions of this uh, kingdom. You know, probably one for each city, one town, you know, each town. Uh, you know, you've got uh, towns, you've got cities, and then you've, like in the United States, you've got uh, counties or, you know, provinces. And then you've got the countries, uh, parishes, whatever, by whatever they call it. So you got, this guy's got a huge, huge territory to cover. I mean, Babylon was considered the um, the gold, the golden kingdom. I mean, it was it was the first major kingdom, and Babylon was where the Tower of Babel was. You know, remember Babel or Babel, and uh, Babylon has reference to confusion. Because God confounded the language. He confused them. You know? Somebody over here couldn't understand Spanish. Somebody over here couldn't understand the English. Somebody over here couldn't understand, well, you know, probably Hebrew and whatever other languages there were. So Babylon was the, probably the greatest, mightiest world power that ever existed up, you know, at that time. Maybe for all time, I don't know. But can you imagine a thousand, you got a thousand servants that are lords over all these territories? So Belshazzar, that's funny, his name, B-E-L. Do you know Bell? And Baal, B-A-A-L, I think these are, uh, B-E-L means Lord. It's just a different spelling of Baal, B-A-A-L. So he's calling himself Lord Shazar. Don't ask me what Shazar means, because I don't know, and I don't want to look it up. So Belshazzar, and you're going to read about uh, Bel when we get to uh, Jeremiah 50. It has reference to same thing as Baal, the satanic deity that Israel and Judah got involved in. So Belshazzar the king made a great feast to a thousand of his lords and drank wine before the thousand. Belshazzar, while whilst he tasted the wine, commanded to bring the gold, golden and silver vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple which was in Jerusalem. So here it is, these holy consecrated cups and vessels and whatever. Uh, he's taking them. So that the king and his princes, his wives and his concubines might drink therein. Can you imagine taking God's consecrated cups for temple worship, putting wine in them, and then having your concubines and your wives and your princes and drinking with them. And then you're, he's praising his gods for giving him victory over the, the God of the Hebrews in the temple. 
hey, I'm, you know, I got this golden cup from the temple and I'm drinking wine in it. Our gods are stronger than the Hebrew gods. I mean, that is absolute pride. Verse 3. Then they brought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple of the house of God, which was at Jerusalem, and the king and his princes, his wives, and his concubine drank in them. They drank wine and praised the gods of gold. They drank wine and praised the gods of gold and of silver, of brass, of iron, of wood, and of stone. Oh, yeah. Our gods kicked the rear end of that Hebrew god in the temple. We got his gold cup right here, and I'm drinking wine out of it as a victory celebration. I'm the mightiest monarch in the world right now. Lift it up in pride. Oh, yeah. At least Nebuchadnezzar had humbled himself before the Lord. This guy? Uh-uh. Verse 5. In the same hour came forth fingers of a man's hand and rode over against the candlestick upon the plaster on the wall of the king's palace, and the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. You ever heard that expression, the writing on the wall? Here you go. Then the king's countenance was changed, and his thoughts troubled him, so that the joints of his loins were loosed, and his knees smote one against another. His knees were knocking together. That's how scared he was. Can you imagine a disembodied hand, like a uh, thing in the Adams family, floating in the air, writing on the wall? I think uh, if I was a heathen, I'd be pretty scared, too. So, the king Belshazzar, the king of Babylon, brings in his astrologers and the magicians and all these, his witches and warlocks and sorcerers, and they couldn't read it. But Daniel could. So then, let's skip to verse 13. Then was Daniel brought in before the king, and the king spake and said unto Daniel, He says, Art thou that Daniel, which art of the children of the captivity of Judah, whom my father, whom the king my father brought out of Jewry? I have even heard of thee. Oh yeah, I bet you you have heard of him. That the spirit of, of the gods is in thee, and that light and understanding and excellent wisdom is found in thee. And now the wise men, the astrologers, have been brought in before me that they should read this writing and make known unto me the interpretation thereof, but they could not show the interpretation of the thing. And I've heard of thee that thou canst make interpretations and dissolve doubts. Now, if thou canst read the writing and make known to me the interpretation thereof, thou shalt be clothed with scarlet and have a chain of gold about thy neck and shalt be the third ruler in the kingdom. Now, remember... Uh, Jeremiah said it, uh, Israel, well, Judah and Jer Jerusalem would be in captivity 70 years. How old is Daniel right now? You know, he's probably, he's probably in his 80s. You know, he's up there. You know, the whole generation that was evil in the Lord's eyes in Jerusalem, pretty much they're all dead now. I mean, Daniel was probably a child or a young teen when he was taken captive. You know, or a teen. I don't know. He might have been a teen. I don't know. But I mean, Daniel's probably, you know, he's got to be like 80-something. If not 90. So verse 17. Then Daniel answered and said before the king, Let thy gifts be to thyself, and give thy rewards to another. Yet I will read the writing unto the king and make known to him the interpretation. O thou king, the most high God gave Nebuchadnezzar, thy father, a kingdom and majesty 
and glory and honor. Who gave it to Nebuchadnezzar? The Most High God. Verse 19. And for the majesty that he gave him, all people, nations, and languages trembled and feared before him. Whom he would, he slew, and whom he would, he kept alive, and whom he would, he set up, and whom he would, he put down. Nebuchadnezzar had a huge, huge kingdom. I don't even think they even know how big it actually was. I mean, he conquered everything from Egypt to uh, Israel to uh, everywhere. I mean, he conquered the Assyrians. He conquered everywhere. Verse 20. But when his heart was lifted up and his mind hardened in pride, he was deposed from his kingly throne and they took his glory from him. And he was driven from the sons of men and his heart was made like the beasts and his dwelling was with the wild asses. They fed him with grass like oxen and his body was wet with the dew of heaven till he knew, till he knew that the most high God ruled in the kingdom of men and he appointeth it over it whomsoever he will. You know, people, the reason Satan exists to deceive and test and try people is because he's serving a purpose in this plan of God. Uh, you know, very few of us even have a clue of how deep this plan goes, but, uh, you know. Now, the thing about Satanists and Luciferians is they actually believe that Satan is very powerful because God cannot get rid of him. Oh, well, if God's so powerful, why didn't why doesn't God get rid of Satan? He can't, because Satan's powerful. Well, read Job one. Satan has a lot of power. He can control weather, and he has sway over people. You know, but he serves God's purpose right now. And there will come a time when Satan will be bound for a thousand years during the millennial reign of Christ. Millennium, uh, millennial just means thousand. It's a Latin word, just means thousand. Uh, probably 20% of the English language is from the Latin. Okay. I mean, you, you couldn't even study law without knowing Latin. Just like you can't study medicine without knowing Greek. All the words for medicine come from Greek. And a lot of our legal stuff comes from Latin. So, of course, English is a mixed up language. You've got Spanish, you've got German, you've got... There's a, there's a bunch of Hebrew words in English, too. Yeah. Adam. Adam means Adam. Yeah. So, God sets up kingdoms, and he overthrows kingdoms. So, till he knew that the Most High God ruled in the kingdom of men, and that he appointeth it over whomsoever he will. And thou his son, O Belshazzar, hath not humbled thine heart, though thou knowest all this but hast lifted up thyself against the Lord of heaven, and they have brought the vessels of his house before thee and thou, and thy lords, thy wives, and thy concubines have drunk wine in them, and thou hast praised the gods of silver and gold, of brass, iron, wood, and stone, which see not, nor hear, nor know. And the God in whose hand thy breath is, and whose are all thy ways, hast thou not glorified? You really think that golden idol in the corner there can hear or see? So he was praising the devil's idols, 
but he didn't honor the God of heaven like his father did. You didn't honor the Lord. Verse 24. Then was the part of the hand sent from him, and his writing was written. And this is the writing that was written. Meany, meany, fecal, upharshan. This is the interpretation of the thing. Meany, God hath numbered thy kingdom and finished it. Fecal, thou art weighed in the balances and art found wanting. Perez, thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and the Persians. You know what modern day Persia is? Iran. And guess what? If you look up the Parthian, uh, Parthia and Persia sound kind of alike, but the Parthian Empire, I believe, was uh, Israelites. They're mentioned in the book of Acts. I read it in a previous study not too long ago. And they were contemporaries with Rome, and they were pretty much uh, equal in power, pretty much. Rome invaded Parthia and got their butts whipped a couple times. Matter of fact, Rome and uh, Parthia fought over Jerusalem. And for a while, Parthia had control. And then Rome, during the time of Christ, was in control. And Parthia was, from what I understand, they were friends with the Greeks and the Scythians. And I believe totally believe that they were Israelites, the divorced Israelites. That's my guess. So, God says he's going to give the kingdom to the Medes and the Persians. Well, guess what happens? After the Medes and the Persians destroy Babylon, they allow Israel to go back, well, Judah, to go back to Jerusalem and rebuild and take all the gold and the vessels and everything that was needed for temple worship and you can read about that in Ezra and Nehemiah 70 years had passed just like Jeremiah had said exactly so then commanded Belshazzar, and they clothed Daniel with scarlet, and put a chain of gold about his neck, and made a proclamation concerning him that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. In that night was Belshazzar, the king of the Chaldeans, slain. You know, God don't play around. You don't give him honor, and you want to worship the devils? Hey, no problem. In that night was Bel. Shazar, the king of the Chaldeans, slain. And Dar Darius, I've heard it said Darius and Darius. And Darius, or Darius, the Median, took the kingdom, being about three score and two years. So he was about 62 years old. You know, sometimes there's more than one way to pronounce a word. Um, I live in South Florida. And uh, well, most of the time, you, you've heard of Pirates of the Caribbean? Well, if you go to the islands, they call it the Caribbean. So is it Caribbean or Caribbean? Uh, when you're here in America, we call it aluminum. When you go to the UK, they call it aluminium. And I'm not making fun of the people UK. My family's from the UK. Well, part of them. We're a mix. Part German. Uh, mom's name leads me to believe she's from, uh, her family was partly from France. Uh, a dad's side, uh, English, German. I don't know. But I won't be sending my uh, DNA to uh, 23 and me. that's for sure. Yeah. And by the way, everybody, take a look at the uh, community page. I got some interesting uh, news stories on that page that I'm not making videos on. 
Sometimes it's easier to just post links and let you go to the uh, news site and read it for yourself. And then I don't have the uh, you know who's listening to the voice recognition software and reading my keywords and deleting my videos. I can't believe how many of my videos they've deleted. A lot. They deleted four of them in one day like two years ago. Four in one day. They deleted two of them uh, about three months ago in one day. Yeah. And I was going through my playlists. And I said, oh, video deleted by YouTube. Video deleted by YouTube. Video deleted by YouTube. I'm like, what? I never got notified. I was never given an opportunity to appeal. People, let me tell you something. Get yourself some King James Bibles and put them away. They're going to be illegal one day. Yes, they are. Trust me. It's going to be a hate crime to hear the words of Jesus. So, all right, so now you got the background. Let's take a look. At Jeremiah chapter 50, verse 1. All right, so let's hit Jeremiah chapter 50, verse 1. The word that the Lord spake against Babylon and against the land of the Chaldeans by Jeremiah the prophet. Declare ye among the nations, and publish, and set up a standard. Publish, and conceal not. Say, Babylon is taken, Bel is confounded. Bel's just another uh, way of saying Lord. Bel and Baal are probably just different pronunciations of the same thing, sort of like Caribbean and Caribbean, the or the, or aluminum or aluminium is just a different way of saying it, and they spell it a little different, but it means Lord, but it was so associated with Satanism that uh, the God of heaven, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob said, don't call me by that title anymore, I don't want to hear it. And then you've got, uh, it says, so, uh, okay, so Babylon is taken, Bel is confounded, Merodach is broken in pieces, her idols are confounded, her images are broken in pieces. Merodach, I suspect, well, it's the name of a satanic god, but uh, I wonder if it's the same as Moloch. I'm not 100% sure, but that's what I suspect. All I know is, no matter by what name you call it, it's Satanism. Verse 3. For out of the north there cometh up a nation against her, which shall make her land desolate, and none shall dwell therein. They shall remove, they shall depart, both man and beast. Now, in the book of Isaiah, there is a verse where it says that Babylon would never be inhabited. And I covered that in a previous study. So, And Saddam Hussein was going to excavate and create, make uh, Babylon into a, another city. And that didn't work out too well. You know, and you just don't do something that the Lord says is not going to happen because the Lord will do what he has to do to prevent it, uh, keep someone from breaking his prophecy. You're not going to break the Lord's prophecy. Lord says something will happen or something will not happen. It's either going to happen or not going to happen. Period. So, uh, let's see, verse 4. 
In those days and in that time, saith the Lord, the children of Israel shall come, they and the children of Judah, together. Now remember, Israel was divorced, but Judah was not. In those days and in that time, saith the Lord, the children of Israel, Israel shall come, and they and the children of Judah together, going and weeping, they shall go and seek the Lord their God. They shall ask the way to Zion, with their faces thitherward, saying, Come, and let us join ourselves to the Lord in a perpetual covenant that shall not be forgotten. What is perpetual? It means forever. A forever covenant. Come and let us join ourselves to the Lord in a perpetual covenant that shall not be forgotten. And well, either you believe the covenant of Jesus Christ or you don't. Verse 6. My people hath been lost sheep. Their shepherds have caused them to go astray. They have turned them away on the mountains. They have gone from mountain to hill. They have forgotten their resting place. God the Father, when he sent his son, Jesus, Jesus always called himself the good shepherd, and he always referred to Israel as his sheep. I hope I don't have to. Uh, uh, you know, you should know that. Boy, I've covered that so many times. Jesus said he's the good shepherd. Verse 7. All that found them hath devoured them, and their adversary said, We offend not, because they have sinned against the Lord, the habitation of justice, even the Lord, the hope of their fathers. Remove out of the midst of Babylon, and go forth out of the land of the Chaldeans, and be as the he-goats before the flocks. You know, it's funny. Jeremiah writes the coming Babylonian invasion before the invasion. He writes of everybody being taken to Babylon. And here it is. He is writing of the destruction of Babylon. I don't know how many years this book was in the making. But I don't, I don't, I, I don't think Jeremiah here is 90-something or 100 years old writing this stuff after the fact. I think he's writing this before the fact. But I could be wrong. I, you know, I'm not the final authority. I'm just some guy that read the book a couple times and doing my best to help everybody understand as best they can. So, verse 8. Remove out of the midst of Babylon and go forth out of the land of the Chaldeans and be as the he-goats before the flocks. For lo, I will raise and cause to come up against Babylon an assembly of great nations from the north country, and they shall set themselves in array against her. From thence she shall be taken. Their arrows shall be as of a mighty expert man, none shall return in vain. So the Medes and the Persians are going to conquer the Babylonians and the Chaldeans. Verse 10. And Chaldea shall be a spoil. All that spoil her shall be satisfied, saith the Lord. Because ye were glad, because ye rejoiced, O ye destroyers of mine heritage, because ye are grown fat as the heifer at grass and bellow as bulls. See, there were people that rejoiced when Israel and Judah were destroyed. Verse 12. Your mother shall be sore confounded. She that bear you shall be ashamed. Behold, 
The hindermost of the nations shall be a wilderness, a dry land, and a desert. Because of the wrath of the Lord, it shall not be inhabited, but it shall be wholly desolate. Everyone that goeth by Babylon shall be astonished and hiss at all her plagues. Suppose the weather patterns changed and it doesn't rain on the area around Babylon anymore and it becomes desert. Well, guess what? Nobody's going to live there. You can't live without water. Verse 14. Put yourselves in array against Babylon round about. Uh, an array is just means uh, gathering yourself into a battle formation. Sort of like the Greek phalanx and the Roman, uh, the Roman legions had a a uh, special type of formation that they had. So put yourselves in array against Babylon round about. All ye that bend the bow, shoot at her. Spare no arrows, for she hath sinned against the Lord. What did Belshazzar, the king of Nebuchadnezzar, do? He sinned against the Lord. Verse 15. Shout against her round about. She hath given her land, her foundations are fallen, her walls are thrown down, for it is, for it is the vengeance of the Lord. Take vengeance upon her, as she hath done, do unto her. From what I understand, there was a river that ran by Babylon, or through Babylon, and uh, I guess weather patterns change because it doesn't anymore. And what the Medes and the Persians did was they threw a bunch of rocks and dammed it up. And they waited until the water got real, real high. I heard the river didn't flow for like three days. They dammed it up. Well, then the water got so high and it just went over the top and just pushed everything out of the way. And then this wall of water came crashing against the walls of Babylon and just knocked them down, or at least a part, well, part of it, you know. And when your walls are knocked down, uh, it's real easy for the enemy troops on the outside to pour into the city. And plus, all your soldiers on top of the wall, well, they fall down. Uh... Soldier fall down and go boom. He had big boo-boo. Yeah. So, not only are the enemy soldiers uh, flooding into your city, but your soldiers are uh, covered with rubble. I mean, you know. And it's not Barney rubble either. Or Fred Flintstone. Verse 16. Cut off the sower from Babylon and him that handleth the sickle in the time of harvest. For fear of the oppressing sword, they shall turn everyone to his people, and they shall flee everyone to his own land. And yeah, that's probably what happened. The weather patterns probably, the Lord changed the weather patterns, and Babylon, instead of being a green, lush, well-watered, fertile area, is now a desert with no, no river. So, verse 17. Israel is a scattered sheep. The lions have driven him away. First, the king of Assyria hath devoured him. And last, this Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, hath broken his bones. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will punish the king of Babylon and his land, as I have punished the king of of Assyria. Now remember, Assyria took Israel away and the Lord sent Babylon and they conquered Assyria. And when the Assyrian Empire fell, 
Now, when you got a bunch of soldiers guarding your slaves and your land's being invaded, well, you're going to recall all those soldiers and send them to the front lines. Well, who's going to guard the slaves in the cities? Nobody. That's who. But then the Babylonians totally crushed the Assyrian army. So when Israel saw how there was no soldiers left to guard them, uh, they packed their bags and uh, hightailed out of Dodge. That's an old Western, uh, U.S. Western movie reference, by the way, for those of you that are overseas. Uh, Dodge City was a city in the West. But, uh, yeah, they, they packed their bags and got out of town. And uh, they went north. And look at the map. What's north of Israel? Europe. They went through the Caucasus Mountains. When Israel was lost to history, the Caucasians of Europe appeared. But that's just a coincidence, I'm sure, according to modern historians. Verse 19, And I will bring Israel, and I will bring Israel again to his habitation, and he shall feed on Carmel and Bashan, and his soul shall be satisfied upon Mount Ephraim and Gilead. Ephraim was the main tribe of northern Israel. They were the, the big, you know, the big ones. The big tribe. The major tribe. Verse 20, in those days and in that time, saith the Lord, the iniquity of Israel shall be sought for, and there shall be none. Wow. And the sins of Judah, they shall not be found. For I will pardon them whom I reserve. Can you imagine that? No sin found and God's people. Why? Because the Lord's going, the, the, the Supreme Judge, the Supreme Court, the real Supreme Court, not a bunch of antichrists that sit in black robes or black dresses saying, it's all right to kill your ch unborn children. You know, the Church of Satan should have uh, freedom of religion. No. No, the real Supreme Court. And I'm speaking from an American perspective. I don't know what they uh, call it in the UK or the EU or whatever country you're from. But God is going to be the Supreme Court. He says, In those days and in that time, saith the Lord, the iniquity of Israel shall be sought for, and there shall be none. And the sins of Judah they shall not be found, for I will pardon them whom I reserve. Go up against the land of Merathim, even against it and against the inhabitants of Pekod, waste and utterly destroy. After them, saith the Lord, and do according to all that I have commanded thee. A sound of battle is in the land and of great destruction. How is the hammer of the whole earth cut asunder and broken? How is Babylon become a desolation among the nations? I have laid a snare for thee, and thou art also taken, O Babylon, and thou wast not aware. Thou art found and also caught, because thou hast striven against the Lord. Why? Because he, they fought against the Lord. Verse 25, the Lord hath opened his armory. Uh, you know what an armory is? Well, in the army, an armory was where they stored all the weapons when they weren't in use. You had a guy there called an armorer who would, you know, inspect the weapons and make sure they were taken care of and fully functional. But here, the Lord hath opened his armory. And brought forth the weapons of his indignation. The weapons of his indignation. What is indignation? Extreme hatred. For this is the work of the Lord God of hosts 
in the land of the Chaldeans. Come against her from the utmost border, open her storehouses, cast her up as heaps, and destroy her utterly. Let nothing of her be left. I think the Lord's mad here. Slay all her bullocks. Let them go down to the slaughter. Woe unto them, for their day has come, the time of their visitation. The voice of them that flee and escape out of the land of Babylon to declare in Zion the vengeance of the Lord our God, the vengeance of his temple. Call together the archers against Babylon, all ye that bend the bow, camp against it round about. Let none thereof escape. Recompense her, you know, pay her back. Recompense her according to her work, according to all that she hath done. Do unto her, for she hath been proud against the Lord, against the Holy One of Israel. Now, this is the same kind of language that's in Revelation. God says to repay Mystery Babylon double. Give her double. Verse 30. Therefore shall her young men fall in the streets, and all her men of war shall be cut off in that day, saith the Lord. Behold, I am against thee, O thou most proud, saith the Lord God of hosts, for thy day is come, the day that I will visit thee. And the most proud shall stumble and fall, and none shall raise him up, and I will kindle a fire in his cities, and it shall devour all round about him. You know, it's, real, it's really hard to defend a city when it's burning all around you. You know, uh, you turn into barbecue. And that's, a, that's an American thing, by the way. I don't know if they have barbecue in the UK. Anybody from the UK? You guys got barbecue? Verse 33, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the children of Israel and the children of Judah were oppressed together, and all that took them captives held them fast. They refused to let them go. Their Redeemer is strong. You know what? You know what a Redeemer is? Back in the Old Testament, um, let's say you owned a piece of property and you owed money or something. You know, you borrowed money and you couldn't pay it back. You could uh, put up the land for like a pawn shop and get money and pay the bill. Or you could sell yourself into service, uh, be a servant, like a slave, for a certain amount of time. Generally, it wasn't forever, if you were a Hebrew, anyways. Uh, then the year of Jubilee would come and then they would let you go, supposedly. However, if you had somebody that was near of kin, a brother or parent or cousin or something like that, somebody in the family, they could take money and redeem you or your land after a certain period of time. Well, who's the redeemer of Israel? Christ! He redeemed them from the law of sin and death. Think of that. Their Redeemer is strong. The Lord of hosts is his name. Their Redeemer is strong. The Lord of no hosts. The Lord of hosts is, is his name. He shall thoroughly plead their cause that he may give rest to the land and disquiet the inhabitants of Babylon. A sword is upon the Chaldeans, saith the Lord, and upon the inhabitants of Babylon, and upon her princes and upon her wise men. A sword is upon the liars and they that dote. A sword is upon her mighty men and they shall be dismayed. A sword is upon their horses and upon their chariots and upon all the mingled people and upon all the mingled people that are in the midst of her and they shall become as women. A sword is upon her treasures and they shall be robbed. A drought is upon her waters, and they shall be dried up. For it is a land of graven images, and they are mad upon their idols. 
see a drought. That's why it turned to desert. But think about this. A land of graven images and idols. Well, what is Mystery Babylon in the end times? Graven images and idols. Verse 39. Therefore the wild beasts of the desert and the wild beasts of the islands shall dwell there, and the owls shall dwell therein. And it shall be no more inhabited forever. Sorry, Saddam Hussein. You thought you were going to inhabit Babylon. Uh-uh. Ain't going to happen. Didn't happen. Neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation. And you know they're talking about owls. Uh, what is Bohemian Grove over in California? What is their um, what is their uh, idol? The owl. Verse forty. As God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah, and the neighbor cities, say it thereof, saith the Lord, so shall no man abide there, neither shall any son of man dwell therein. Behold, a people shall come from the north, and a great nation, and many kings shall be raised up from the coasts of the earth. They shall hold the bow and the lance. They are cruel and will not show mercy. Their voice shall roar like the sea, and they shall ride upon horses, everyone put in array like a man to the battle against thee, O daughter of Babylon." The king of Babylon hath heard the report of them, and his hands waxed feeble. Anguish took hold of him, and pangs as of a woman in travail. Behold, he shall come up like a lion from the swelling of Jordan unto the habitation of the strong, but I will make them suddenly run away from her. And who is a chosen man that I may appoint over her? For who is like me? And who will appoint me the time? And who is that shepherd that shall stand before me? Well, the Son of God, right? Jesus, who is Christ. Therefore hear ye the counsel of the Lord that he hath taken against Babylon and his purpose, that he hath pur purposed against the land of the Chaldeans. Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Surely... He shall make their habitation desolate with them at the noise, at the noise of the taking of Babylon. The earth is moved and the cry is heard among the nations. And that, everybody, is the end of Jeremiah chapter 50. All blessings, praise, glory and honor to God the Father and his only begotten Son, the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in the name of Jesus, who is the Christ. In his blessed name, amen.